Hello BG, I'm Jared Smith and this is your Friday Falcon Sports Report. Earlier, BG Women's Basketball announced that they would be parting ways with head coach Jennifer Roos. Reporter Chase Bachman has more. In the early afternoon of Thursday, March 8th, Bowling Green State University fired head women's basketball coach Jennifer Roos. Roos had spent 17 years with the program, including six as the head coach. Back in 2001, a young head coach by the name of Kurt Miller began his head coaching tenure at Bowling Green and invited Roos to be an assistant. Three years later, in 2004, Roos was promoted to associate head coach. Roos was a part of a coaching staff that between 2001 and 2012 won 258 games, an average of almost 24 a season. During that time span, Roos also made five NCAA tournament appearances, including a Sweet 16 appearance in 2007. When Miller left in 2012 to become the head coach of the women's team at Indiana University, Roos was again promoted, this time to the position of head coach. In Roos' first season as head coach, her Falcons won 24 games and a trip to the WNIT. That season was followed by a year in which the Falcons won 30 games and resulted in another WNIT appearance. Roos received MAC Coach of the Year honors. In her following four seasons, the Falcons failed to achieve that same level of success. Roos won a combined 38 games over the next four seasons. In her last year, the team went 11-19 and as well as 3-15 and in the MAC. Roos was fired with one year still remaining on her contract. Athletics Director Bob Moosberger has begun the search for a new head coach immediately. Reporting for BG24 Sports, I'm Chase Bachman. BG Basketball will have to make some changes to their roster after losing three key members of their squad this week. The first to go was point guard Roderick Caldwell, who announced his intent to transfer from the program via Twitter on Sunday. This news was immediately followed by freshman forward Derek Koch and guard Nelly Cummings. Announcements to transfer as well as the following day. The reasons for and destinations of these transfers have not yet been determined, but some speculate that Roderick Caldwell's departure is due to Coach Huger's midseason change in the lineup that placed a sophomore guard on the bench. Keep following the Falcon Sports Report as we will continue to follow this story as it progresses. It was the end of the road for BG Hockey last weekend as the Falcons fell in the final game of the WCHA semifinal series. Reporter Max Marco recaps the season for the Falcons. The season for BG Falcon Hockey has come to an end after an overtime thriller went in favor of WCHA semifinal opponent Northern Michigan despite the last second heroic efforts from the Falcons. Bowling Green concludes the 2017-2018 season with a record of 23-17-6 overall and a 17-6-5-2 record in conference play. This is the fourth consecutive season BGSU has put together a 21 season under head coach Chris Bergeron. He moves his career record to 146, 143, and 9 in the eight seasons he's been with the program. BG extended a current NCAA record of eight straight seasons with a playoff series victory with their quarterfinal sweep of Ferris State. That series also included an exciting overtime that went in favor of the Falcons, courtesy of Brandon Cruz. And now it's going to be Mitch McLean. Two on one, McLean on the right wing circle. McLean in overtime shoots. Same rebound. Brandon Cruz wins it in OT. Two on Falcon. Collegiate hockey careers for seniors Brett DeAndrea, Jacob Reichert, Tyler Spezia, and senior captain Mitch McLean come to an end as well. During his time here, McLean was able to eclipse 100 points as a Falcon, the 71st player in BGSU's history to defeat that mark. The senior class put together 30% of the team's goal output this year, totaling 37 goals and 65 total points. And while some careers may be ending, some have just begun. Freshman Max Johnson, Brandon Cruz, Connor Ford, Cameron Wright, Justin Wells, and Carson Musser helped the Falcon freshman class become the third most successful freshman class in the nation, with 123 points between the six skaters. Cruz and Johnson both made the All-WCHA rookie team for their efforts, and that pair, along with Cameron Wright, ranked in the top 20 in freshman scoring in the nation. Freshman goalie Eric Dopp stands out in his own right as he also slotted into the All-WCHA rookie team. Dopp played 15 games this season and stopped 326 shots for a 901 save percentage. Sophomore defenseman Alec Rawhauser, perhaps one of the most successful Falcons this year, finished second in defensive scoring in the nation with 39 points in 41 games, allowing him to be the only Bowling Green Falcon selected to the all-WCHA first team 
and was later named WCHA Defender of the Year. While this season came to an abrupt end, Bowling Green State University hockey can look back on a memorable season and look forward to a bright future that lies ahead. For BG24, I'm Max Marco. The football season may be over, but there's always time to talk about next year. Our own Leo Goldman sat down with BG wide receivers Scotty Miller and Daytron Guyton to talk about the previous season and the future of the program. I'm in a place right now where the Falcons didn't find themselves a lot in 2017, the end zone. But Daytron Guyton and Scotty Miller have a plan to change all that. I sat down with them recently to talk about Falcon football and their expectations for 2018. I'm joined now by the 1-2 wide receiver core punch of the Falcon football team, Daytron Guyton and Scotty Miller. Thanks for joining me today, guys. No problem. No problem. So you guys obviously play the game in two different styles. Daytron, you stand at 6'5". Scotty, a little bit of an undersized wide receiver at 5'10". How do you think this plays into your guys' ability to kind of play off of each other? Uh, I think we both like play fast with speed, which helps, helps us beat matchups on our side of the field. Because like, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident with Scotty inside of me, just because I know he'll pull the safety away. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. Um, we're obviously very different size-wise, like you said. He's a big, tall, lengthy receiver, and I'm a short little guy. Um, but we both play at the high. We both play very fast. Uh, we, we play as fast as we can on every snap. Um, so it's hard, it's hard for teams to adjust to us because we play on the same side of the field. So um, they can't really uh, put two defenders on both of us. So usually one of us can, uh, can get a good matchup. Guyton and Miller acknowledge that they play the game in different ways, but both say that they build off of each other to form success. After a historically bad 2017 for the Falcons, Miller and Guyton both say that they know it was tough for the fans, but it was even worse on the players. Last year was not the best year in Falcon history. Uh, kind of a down year. We went 2-10, and 0-6 oh at home. What would you guys say to, you know, because BG has a lot of doubters, what would you say to people who say this year isn't going to be any different? Yeah, I think last year was tough for sure. I mean, uh, it wasn't tougher for anybody than us. I mean, we, we went through it. Um, it was brutal. It was terrible, and we, we own that. Um, but um, this year we're ready to step it up. We think we had a lot of young guys last year. It was the coaching staff's second year. Um, it was kind of a, an adjustment year. But this year, you know, Jared Deggie's coming back. Last year was his first year. So I think this year he's going to have a big year. Um, and then really this offseason, we're just going to work as hard as we can to make sure that does not happen again. Bowling Green's got a great tradition um, of winning, and, and we're going to bring that, bring that back this year. Yeah, I just think we're like right now we're we're on a stage where we're trying to find our identity as a team. Like we're all trying to make sure that we're on the same pay, page and path, and everybody is like following each other as one. I think that was our problem last year. We had a lot of people trying to be individuals instead of like a team, which we're trying to X that out now. Miller has been with the Falcons longer than most, and he played on that outstanding 2015 team. But he thinks things have definitely changed since that Falcon fast offense left town. Scott, you were on the 2015 MAC championship team with that outstanding Falcon fast offense. Would you say that the culture has kind of shifted a little bit for you guys with the departure of Dino Babers, Matt Johnson's gone, Roger Lewis is gone, you're one of the few wide receivers left. Does it feel a little bit different now? Yeah, it's for sure different. I mean, they had a lot of a lot of stars on that team, a lot of leadership. Matt Johnson was a great leader, a great player. Roger Lewis, Garrick Dieter, all those guys you named, those guys were great players and great leaders. Um, but now it's a new wave and we gotta we gotta take that upon ourselves to step up and be those new leaders and go out on Saturdays and make plays for this university. So um, it's different, but I mean, new guys have to step up and that's kind of what hasn't been happening the past two years. But this year, I'm a senior, Jason's gonna be a senior. We gotta be guys that, you know, um, take the reins and take over and lead, lead this football team to another MAC championship. Jason, this is not your first college football experience. Obviously you played at Oregon State, you transferred over to BG. A lot of players when they first transfer kind of struggle in their first year, but you, you know, you were thrown right into the fire and you definitely were able to have success. How difficult or easy was that transition for you and did anybody help you out to kind of make sure that you were ready for this? I mean, personally, like when I first got here, like Scotty and J-Mo, like they, they helped me pick up the play system a little bit faster, like when I was doing extra studying and stuff. But um, I really just I really just think what helped me adjust the most was like that my team believed in me. You know, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't just like, they like it wasn't just like they just brought me here to bring me here. It was like I, I felt like I was a part of something or like I was a piece that was needed, you know what I'm saying? And we went with it and it worked out how it worked out and hopefully I can escalate even higher this year. Scott, you have been first team all Mac and third team all Mac 
in the last two years. Do you have a specific goal in mind for this upcoming season? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to get, get, back to the, get back to the first team All-Mac and, and receive those honors. But I mean, more than that, it's, it's the team. I mean, I want, I want to have a winning record this year. La the last two years have been unacceptable. Um, we just haven't got the job done. So this year, I want to do everything I can possibly do to help the team get back to a winning record, get back to the MAC championship, and win it and win it all. So um, anything I can do to help us get there, that's, that's what I'll be willing to do and, and just work as, as, as possibly hard as I can because this is my last go around. This is my senior year. I've been here for three years. And I'm ready to every day give it everything I got to go win a MAC championship. Daytron, you're originally from Texas, and you know how it is with people from Texas. It's football and then breathing. So back in 2013, you were named one of the top 100 players in the entire state. Do you think that kind of showed people how truly talented you were and gave them a good estimation about what you could do on the field? Uh, I think so because, like, what most people don't understand, when I was ranked the top 100 player, most people don't understand I was a two-and-a-half-star recruit. I went to no camps, you know, no, no combines, any of that. I did all that off of stats and just playing. Despite both guys having good years individually, individual stats are not what interests this tandem, but rather getting the team back where it needs to be. Both are willing to admit that after a bad year like 2017, the seat under head coach Mike Jinks can feel a little warm. Do you think there's more pressure on you guys to perform now? I mean... You know, it's not like in the NFL where a coach's job security is always going to be questioned, but obviously there is some question about job security with Coach Jenks. Do you think that kind of results in more pressure on you guys and on the starting line and everybody to step up? I think there's a little bit of pressure for sure. I mean, after these two years, it's like it's time to win or else like, changes are, will be made. So um, we're, we're ready to fight for everybody. I mean, for the, for the team, for the coaches, for everybody for the university and just show people like this these last two years isn't what Bowling Green football is about we got to change change the culture and bring it back to what it was um so so we're gonna fight for for everybody um it's an old saying like you know pressure not only just break pipes but pressure also make diamonds so pressure isn't necessarily a bad thing the coach has been kind of harder on you guys this off season than they were last year I mean they're just more strict like we were trying to get our accountability like in order and we're trying to establish like true leadership and like weed out those who don't want to be a part of the team or just here just to be here so like of course it got a little, a little thicker but I mean they're tough on us but only the strong survive in this sport we know this we chose to come down this path and we, we knew we know it's going to be changes and like we, we just came from being two and ten coach is going to make adjustment we expected them to come back harder on us than they were before despite last year's performance the duo says 2018 could be a big year for the orange and brown? I'd say one of our biggest strengths is just the youth that we had is, is getting older, like Jared Deggy coming back. I mean, he started those last care. five games. Uh, Drew, our running back. Um, you know, Matt Wilcox, we had a bunch of young guys. So I think those guys being in their second year is gonna be a big strength for us. And then defensively, we got a new defensive coordinator. So we think um, he can really help us out and hopefully our defense can, can make big strides. and and hopefully we can work together and, and be a much better team this year. So A lot of people who came out to the Doit last year were kind of disappointed to see that, you know, the Falcon faithful and the student body weren't really showing up to games. And, you know, you could point at the fact that our record wasn't good, but, you know, even a couple of games into the season when, you know, we were just sitting at 0-1 or 0-2 and they still weren't coming out. What kind of message do you have for the Falcon students who kind of say, you know what, I don't want to go to these games that, you know, we may we may lose. What do you have to say to people like that? Uh, we just trying to get back to the old tradition. BG's in uh, a winning school, and we plan on bringing it back this season. That's what we grinding for. We we all grinding extra hard together in the spring and doing a lot of stuff together than we didn't do last year. Trying to get better, and we're gonna carry over. I mean, the most we can do is work on ourselves. And you know what I'm saying? And and because everybody's not perfect, it's part of our games we all gotta work on. So. I mean, it's up to them, but realistically, we'll love to support, you know what I'm saying, because that also gives us a little extra energy when we step on the field to see that it's yeah. the students and we have support, even even though we got each other's back no matter what. Yeah, I'd say last year was, I mean, it was tough because we, we, we weren't very good, we struggled, so it's like it's hard for us to expect the fans to show up because we didn't deserve it. But this year, like, 
we're ready to win this year. We're and having those having those fans in the in the stadium. It bring like he said, it brings a ton of energy and is way easier to play. I mean, me and him love playing off the crowd, getting everybody pumped up, getting everybody hyped, and it's way easier to go out and score touchdowns and have fun out there when you got fans supporting you. So, um, hopefully this year we can win and those fans can come out and help us win. So, all right, guys, we'll make sure to pack the Doit in 2018 and best of luck to you guys during the season. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for having us. The stands may be empty right now, but come September 8th against the Maryland Terrapins, this place will be rocking. For VG24 Sports, I'm Leo Goldman. And that's all for this Falcon Sports Report. For producer Zach Carrion, director Garrett McKinney, and everyone here at VG24 Sports, thanks for watching. Check in again on Monday for more updates and stories about your favorite Falcon teams.